Hot off the production line from BBC Video 3, John le Carre classics including Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, complete with sneak preview of the tale's conclusion. <laughs> Welcome to From the Archive, a British television vlog. My name is Greg Bakken. Thank you very much for joining me in this first video, hopefully there'll be more, of kind of taking a look at some of these British television releases. And I really was inspired by, of all things, unboxing videos. But the problem with unboxing videos is that they don't really tell you anything. They show you what's in a box, and basically that's it. I wanted to be able to take a look at some of these new releases, maybe down the line we take a look at some of the older releases, and kind of show why these things are good visually, why, why you would want to buy them, what do they do, going from the actual packaging to the video quality, but not only that, but taking a look in some cases, such as today's case actually, taking a look at, for example, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and taking a look at past releases, the quality, the packaging, what are the extras, how do they, how do they compare with other releases, what's the best release for you to buy? And I wanted to kind of give a little bit of that, and hopefully that I can provide that, maybe not help you make up your mind per se, but maybe give you some of the, uh, some of the tools so that you can make up your mind on it which would be kind of nice. So this year marks the 40th anniversary of the television adaptation of John le Carre's Tinker Tailor's Soldier Spy. Uh, it was co-production between the BBC and Paramount Pictures in the US and um, in the UK, it's always been a seven-episode serial, but in the US, on PBS, and I think it ran like on Great Performances, uh, I think the initial run in 1980 was also seven episodes, but every repeat and every home media release since then has been six episodes, which I'm not really quite sure why. I'd be very interested to know if there's people who watched it at the time of broadcast that can confirm to me that it did air seven episodes originally in the US. Every time it's been released in uh, the UK, uh, on DVD at least, and Blu-ray, it's now been s seven episodes. BBC Studios released on the 2nd of September of this year the Blu-ray for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy with a new transfer from its 16mm source. Um, and I want to talk about this release today and I want to talk about the other releases of this story prior to this and kind of go over the differences not only in quality but also talk about uh, the packaging in terms of what extras you got, what was the difference between uh, this and the other versions that have come out, including the stuff that came out in uh, the uh, in the U.S. because that's very different from what came out in the U.K. So I want to go over that a little bit. It was a major deal to get Sir Alec Guinness to star in this, especially since he had no desire to do any television whatsoever. He wanted to stay in film. As many of you know, he has a very extensive film uh, background. But a lot of you probably know him a lot more for a certain science fiction film that came out in 1977 and that Sir Alec Guinness has come to basically hate over time. So, for respect of Sir Alec Guinness, I shall not name that film. Tinker Tailor's Soldier Spy was heavily featured in the Radio Times, which is the BBC uh, TV listings publication. And it gave away to a five-page feature on which for the BBC, that's quite a lot. They really put a lot into the background of this production. They thought it's very prestigious. 
Um, I'm not going to be reviewing the story itself, um, except to say it's good, but it's very procedural, very methodical. It takes patience to watch it. Let it unfold. Let it just take its time. It's seven episodes. There's a lot that happens. There's a lot of flashbacks. There's a lot of just a lot of pieces going on, and it's hard to keep track of it. So you really do want to give the time to watch it because there's just too much happening in it. If you're unsure of the premise of this story, because there is so much going on in it, this episode description from the 8th of September, 1979 Radio Times, gives, gives a good start to what the story is about. Some say George Smiley is an innocent retirement. Others say he was sacked after the Czech scandal. But all agree that nobody ever leaves a circus without some unfinished business. There you go. Now, the very first release of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy was on VHS in 1991. And I believe that was a double tape, omnibus version of the story, meaning that there were no episode uh, open and end credits between the episodes. You had one at the beginning and one at the end of the first tape, same with the second one. The second release on VHS, which is actually the first time I ever got the series on VHS, was from 1999. This probably is exactly what you got in 1991, except that you get uh, a nicer cover, I think. I always love the way these look. In fact, what I found very interesting is that three Lakari stories were released at the same time to with, with this one also. Uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, Smiley People, and then A Perfect Spy with uh, Peter Egan. And they all have this sort of same look to them, which I thought was really neat. And of course, on the inside, you just have, remember these VHS tapes? You just have some tapes in there. Uh, what I also always loved about these, uh, these for anything that came out from the BBC, you always had other, uh, other releases that you was like, ooh, I want these too. These are really good advertisements for uh, other stuff that was out there. Especially one, the telefanny stuff, fantasy stuff like uh, Doctor Who or Blake 7. And you'd open up and you'd see like adverts for tripods and Doomwatch and all this stuff. I'm like, wow, I want all of these. So we move along to the digital age. And very early on in the DVD era for the BBC, they released this, which is uh, from 2003. It is uh, seven episodes. It's Ticker Taylor Soldier Spy on DVD. And um, this was, you know, this was a pretty big deal back in the day. This is unedited. This has all the episodes opening and closing titles, which to me is a massive deal. I have to have that. Um, and the only extra on this is a documentary called The Secret Center, which is a documentary from 2000 that the BBC made, which is basically a very long interview with John Lacari. And it really gives a lot of detail and background. It's very good, actually. It's very good for this release. Um, but that's all that's on here. Now we move over to the U.S. And in 2009, Acorn Media... For anyone who doesn't know Acorn Media, they're a huge distributor of British television in the U.S. They actually have their own streaming channel now. Um, but they're really known for uh, bringing over to the U.S. Um, stuff like Agatha Christie's Poirot or Midsummer Murders, which is huge for them. Doc Martin is distributed through them. Um, and a number of other things. Uh, less and less archival stuff and um, more of the new stuff. And really, more of the new stuff that's streaming. And that's fine. But in 2009, they released a DVD set of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. In it uh, was six-episode version of the story and uh, not the seven. We jump ahead to 2012, and it might have been 2013, actually, that this was released. Same cover as the DVD, probably the same contents, too, to be honest. But this is the uh, U.S. release of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And uh, in it, a couple interesting things. Um, double disc set. It is a... It is a six-episode version, opposed to the BBC Proper 7. And it has actually a number of interesting extras to it. The extras that this has is an exclusive interview with John Irvin, who is the director of this story, which is a 29-minute 
uh, interview, which is kind of nice. There's also an interview with John Macari, which is 27 minutes. There is uh, production notes that are included on this. Plus, there's deleted scenes, which in my guess is probably um, the scenes that would help make up the seventh episode or, or throughout the story to create the seventh episode. They didn't just cut out a seventh episode. You know, they obviously cut out pieces from the other six and the seventh to, to rework the whole thing. What I find the most interesting, though, of this, which I think is kind of nice, comes with this very little booklet. And inside, it has a list of glossary and terms of all of the, uh, the people in the story, plus different terms that might help you. Because they also know that this is methodical, this is procedural, this takes a long time to get through, and also has a cast list too, which is really nice. You know, the downside to this Blu-ray though, is that it's an up-res. Meaning, if you're not sure what an up-res means, it means that it's taking a standard definition source, which is going to be low quality these days, and it's blown up to be HD. Kind of what they're doing with the Doctor Who releases right now and other releases like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Red Dwarf. There's, there's software that make this look really good. The Doctor Who is a great example of that. The, the thing that's a problem with this is that this is on film. So we don't want to have an up res of this. We want to have a rescan of the film because that's going to give us much better quality, much better clarity. Um, I was doing, I was doing uh, reviews for Acorn at the time. They would send me material. They sent me this, and I reached out to them. I watched it. I'm like, this is not HD. This is an SD up res. And they told me, nope. We 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 started from scratch. We did we we did it from scratch. It's it's wonderful. It's not. Is it horrible? No. Don't get me wrong at all. It's not horrible. It's not a new scan. In this day and age, you want that. At the time, this was the best you could probably get for Blu-ray, but you want to be able to have something of nice quality. And that's where we move to the current release. Incidentally, Smiley's People was also released on Blu-ray at this time, too. So if you want, in the U.S., and you want to get Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and Smiley's People on Blu-ray, you do have an option. But now we move to 2019, and in September, we got this, which is a brand new transfer of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And it's quite nice. It's a nice modern transfer. You know, when I say modern, you can tell that it's, it's new. You can tell that it, it's, it's a nice, clean transfer of the images. The images are really sharp. There's a nice bit of film grain to this. It looks really good. It looks like that this belongs on Blu-ray. Um, and I'm really happy to watch this. If I were to complain, and far be it for me to do so, but if I were to complain, I think what I would say, though, is that um, the, the grading, which means how a, a professional adjusts the color on the screen of what you're watching, I think the grading's a little flat on this. And like that the skin tones are all the same, and they're just kind of a little pale, I think. Not as... Um, there's not really a lot of color going around. Now, one might argue the story itself doesn't have a lot of color to it because of the story matter and the different places that it's located. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. But you also have to be careful, too, because you can go to the other end of the spectrum. And I'm, I'm citing from uh, the House of Cards US HD release, which was a brand new transfer and a brand new restoration. And it looks really good. Um, but the thing is, the second story, that seems to have all their faces look like that they, they shot the uh, story in Asana. They're very red, and it's actually kind of distracting at some point, uh, which is unfortunate. It's a very good transfer, but that part is a little too much for me. So you can have, on one end, minimal color with Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, or at the end, other end, you could have maybe a little too much with To Be King. Granted, this is subjective also. You might look at it and be like, well, you know, this is as much color as I'd ever want. And you might look at House of Cards. I keep looking over there because it's on my shelf over there. Um, you might look at House of Cards and you're just like, there's nothing wrong with that either. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So that's just my opinion on it. 
but I still love it. I'm still happy that this was done. Uh, you know, as far as extras are concerned, the only extra on this set is going to be the same extra that is on the, the original DVD. It's the Secret Center documentary from 2000 with um, John Lucari. And it looks like it's an up res of it. Um, it looks good. It looks very good, actually. Part of me would wish, and you know, wishing is the easiest part of all this, isn't it? Especially when you're not a producer with a very tight budget. I would have loved to have seen some kind of retrospective made of the story of making of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. I would like to have seen this this retrospective made because this is such an important piece of television. It would have been nice to be able to hear a little background on something from maybe Michael Jaston who's in this or once again John Le Carre, which we know if you do some reading that this is his favorite adaptation of his work for, for television or film because it's so good and he was just thrilled that uh, Sir Alec Guinness, also known from that science fiction uh, movie, was playing George Smiley in this. That would have been great. Granted, this stuff costs money. It costs a lot more money than I think we realize. Also, <clears throat> because I can, a lot of people, I think, probably think, well, who cares about um, covers? You know, it's I've, I've seen people, especially when it comes to Doctor Who, and especially when it's a DVD, and each story had its own individual cover, which I love. People are like, who cares about the cover? All you're gonna see is a spine on the shelf. Yeah, sure, good for you. I want, I, I love the cover. To me, it's, it's, it's kind of like how people love album covers and whatnot. It's very much that aesthetic, pleasing piece to it. And I think this really does it for me. I love this cover. It's such a really striking looking uh, piece to it and a good design. It's just a very strong design. The only thing that I would venture to suggest is that George Smiley is on this cover twice. He's up here and he's down here, which seems kind of weird, especially that the circus, there's a number of people we could put in there. Um, but you know, I'm not gonna, there's not gonna be anyone who's gonna look at it and like, well, why is George Smiley on here twice and like decide not to buy it? Just an observation, that's all. And I am a fan of O-rings. O-rings are really cool, especially uh, this one has a, a really nice matte finish to it. I do like that a lot. Um, I like, like seeing it on my shelf, that's all. Very simple over here. As far as techno technical aspects of this Blu-ray are concerned, this Blu-ray is, uh, the picture itself is 4x3 in terms of how it was originally broadcast. So. It's still a 16 by 9 picture, but you have your black pillar box on either side of you, but it's a 4 by 3 just as I was, how it was um, broadcast 40 years ago. It's a Region B Blu-ray, so basically if you're in the U.S. and you want to play this, unless you have a special DVD machine or Blu-ray machine or Blu-ray drive or a PlayStation or however you want to do it, uh, it has to be hacked to be able to play these, so you just can't just buy it from Amazon in the UK or something and put it in play. You'll need a special player for that. The audio is English DTS HD MA mono, so it's it's its original mono, and it, you know it sounds good. You know that's it sounds good for its time. As I said before, I'm really happy with this release. I think this looks really good. Uh, I'm very happy that this was released. It's a very clean, good-looking transfer for it, and we're going to show examples here in a, in a little bit, but I, I think it looks really good. Now, the thing is, I don't think a restoration was done on this release. I think that they did a new transfer and did minor work on it. It's not a full restoration, say, once again, something that we hold the high bar for for Doctor Who. But I don't think it has to be that way either. Not all TV series can afford the Doctor Who treatment. Um, and it's just nice to be able to get clean, nice transfers and the best work that can be done on them when they can. What you may or may not know is that more of these are coming out and the next one in November is going to be Edge of Darkness, which also came out on DVD at the same time as this, but the good news is, is that this is also going to be a new transfer from 16mm film. The only thing I know of is like 
I think this is something that a couple of the members of the restoration team wanted to work on. I know Mark Ayers in particular found at the BBC Archive a lot of audio that could have been worked in a lot of different ways to create different mixes and stuff. And unfortunately, he's not getting the chance to do that. I'm not quite sure who works on these. Um, BBC Studio, I know, works on them, but I'm not sure what that necessarily means all the time. Now, I just want to do a quick uh, comparison here, just so it's clear, of the differences between the 2012 Acorn US release and the current, the brand new BBC release. And that's simply the US release from Acorn from 2012 has uh, some different extras. I don't know if it's more extras, I guess. I keep saying more, but I think it kind of turns out to be the same amount of extras. But uh, the episodes are up which to me is a problem. The current release, the new release from the BBC that was just released in September, uh, ported over its extra from the 2003 DVD with that 2000 documentary, uh, The Secret Center, and uh, the episodes have been given a new transfer, which improves the resolution and therefore improves the clarity of the picture. And uh, that's something that I really, really want to see in these releases. Now, um, here is a comparison of all the versions of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, so you can kind of see for yourself, knowing full well that who knows how many times I have to compress this to get you to see it. Um, I don't know how good it's going to look, but trust me, my eyes tell me that this uh, release is really good. But this is a comparison. Right. We shall start. Basically, what I just want to say is that I highly recommend this release to anybody who wants to get it. Um, it's, it's well worth it. It's beautiful. Um, I would get this over any other release personally if you can, if you live in the U.S. and you have the right kind of player to play this or if you want to invest into a player to get uh, this release and other releases over there. I would highly recommend it. It looks great and uh, it's it's of something I've watched a couple times already and I really do enjoy it quite a bit. Plus. You never know when you want to watch something starring Sir Al Guinness where he isn't playing that part in that science fiction film. You may or may not know that I do a podcast on British television also uh, that is co-produced by Kaleidoscope, which is the British Television Preservation Society in the UK. They find a lot of stuff over there, and they also have a great uh uh, inventory of books that they publish as well as do some amazing events over there and we do this podcast also called from the archive a British television podcast if you want to I would highly recommend listening to that too the most current episode features uh, a discussion on what we call the Randolph tapes which are audio tapes that were found in December of 2018 that have missing episode recordings of Doctor Who episodes. We're on iTunes, 
as well as other places, check it out because uh, I'm really proud of it and I hope you like it too. And then I am an admin on the Kaleidoscope Facebook page. And uh, one of the things that I hear quite a bit is people asking, well, you know, what episodes exist for Here's Harry? Or what episodes exist for um, Hancock's Half Hour? Or can you tell me the archival state of Fraud Squad or something like that? And the thing about all that is that um, there is this resource that Kaleidoscope put together called TV Brain that has all that information in it. It has synopsis for a lot of the episodes, it certainly has episode titles, dates, cast, um, the archival holdings for those episodes, whether they exist or not. And if you're uh, doing some serious research in British television, or you're like me, and you just want to know this stuff, this is good information to have. It is a subscription service, but it is well worth it, and it has all this information on hand that has taken 30 years of volunteers to put together and put in one place. And it's not like an IMDB, which is this big commercial monster that is putting this stuff together. Like I said, this is volunteers who love British television and are putting all this stuff together. And I would highly recommend, once again, check it out. Go to www.tvbrain.info and check it out. And uh, I think you're not going to be disappointed by what you find over there. Um, now, as far as this is concerned, if you like this, please let me know because this is the first and I have another one that I'm putting together right now also. But if you like it, I'd love to do more and if you find this useful. Um, in fact, uh, if there's a re release that's been out that you've just wanted to get some more information on, such as maybe Quatermass in the Pit Blu-ray or something along those lines, we can put a video together of that too if there's interest in it. Just let me know. Please share these videos. Please let us know if you like them or areas that you think that could be improved, politely please, and other things. And we would, you know, I'd love to be able to do that because I think these are fun to put together. To get a hold of me and to do that, just send me a note at feedback at fromtheArchive.co.uk. Um, my Twitter is at fromtheArchive. Facebook, you can go to facebook.com backslash from the archive MN. That's because I'm from Minnesota. I'm a Yank. What can I say? And then, of course, my blog, which hasn't been updated in a while, is www.from the archive.co.uk. It rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? So, <clears throat> definitely. Uh, please reach out. Let me know what you think of this because I need that information. I need to know what you all think about these. Hope you found this enjoyable and useful. I know that I enjoy doing this. Um, but now it's time to put this release back where it belongs. See you next time. <laughs>